Hi, Matt B here and welcome to M2M, the channel that burns the nonsense. And welcome to this new revised series of Moon Hoax Debunked. If you're familiar with this intro and this series, please feel free to skip to the main video using the timestamps in the description below or using the chapter markers. Why revised? Well, as you know, we've got up to episode 11 in this series. And episode 12 was to be heat radiation and vacuum should melt the camera films. Well, I don't really think this fits the bill as a common moon hoax theory. So I'm going to replace it with one I'd actually just forgotten about until just recently. So episode 12 is going to be replaced with footprints should not hold their shape on the moon. Also, as you see from the list, it ends with episode 16. Well, we're going to end this series with episode 17 this year. Well, I'll add one at the end. So keep watching till the end of the series where you'll find out what that one is. But fear not, this series will begin again in January with what I'm going to call Moon Hoax Debunked Plus, where we'll look at the less common moon hoax theories. But this time, it's going to involve you, the viewers. So keep watching this channel to the end of this series while I'll produce a video explaining how you can get involved. Well, that's enough from me. Let's roll the credits and watch the video. Number 12. Footprints on the moon should not be able to hold their shape. So here is the revised new number 12 on the list. The argument with this one is that because there is no moisture on the moon, the footprints should not be able to hold their shape and be as defined in detail as they show in the photos. Therefore, the moon landings are fake. So why are the conspirators claiming this? Well, it's because they falsely compare the dust on the lunar surface to dry sand. And rightly so, if you walk on dry sand, you create undefined footprints with no detail. But if you step in wet sand, you do get a more detailed and defined footprint that holds its shape. Until the sand dries out, of course. But in reality, sand and moon dust are very different. Let's have a look, a uh, close look at some of grains of sand. As you see in the images, the grains of sand in the most part are rounded and smooth due to weathering so you won't be able to make dry sand hold any kind of shape collectively unless you add water to the mix. Then the water acts like a bond which allows the sand grains to hold together. As I'm sure you remember as a child you had to make the sand wet to make those sandcastles we enjoyed as uh, in our younger days on the beach. Okay so now let's look at lunar dust. Firstly you may remember how Neil Armstrong uh, described the lunar dust. No? Okay well here's a little reminder. So as you heard, he didn't describe it as anything like sand, but a fine powder. Now when we look at the lunar dust under a microscope, we can see key difference between this and sand. As you'll see in this image, the lunar dust particles are uneven shapes and jagged, making it much easier than sand to hold the shape collectively. It behaves in a very similar way to flour, as they both have particles that are uneven in shape. As you'll see from this demonstration clip I made, I put some dry flour in a container, trod in the flour with my boot, and there you see it for yourself. The print holds its shape. Not forgetting, of course, the 1 6 gravity of the moon compared to here on Earth. This, ladies and gentlemen, is why the moon dust doesn't need moisture to hold its shape on the moon. So, for the 12th time in this series, we add yet another theory to the fire. Pass the matches. Gonna enjoy seeing this one burn. <laughs> 